you. Yeah, I'm here. Um, yeah, so uh, I guess I'm here to uh, introduce a, a, a different aspect so we don't end up always talking about Bitbake and, uh, and Yocto. Um, so I guess in like uh, 10 or maybe 15 minutes, I have to give you a quick intro to what AUSP is, and then we get a chance to bitch about it and, tell, uh, and, and, dis and discuss which bits we like and which bits we don't like. Um, let me begin by asking, is, is, how many people here use AOSP or uh, have been exposed to it or? Exposed. <laughs> okay, so I'm seeing like three, four hands. Okay, is anybody here from Google, just a matter of interest? Any Googlers here? Okay, so be careful what you say about Google then. Yeah, it's working. Okay, um, so the, the genesis of this talk then really is that uh, AUSP is a build system in some ways quite similar to Yocto and slightly less so, but, but also similar to, to build root. So there's a lot of things in common between all of these build systems. Um, specifically to AUSP, so AUSP, the AUSP build system only builds AUSP, it's not general purpose. But apart from that, we'll, we'll let that go. Um, ASP itself is a huge code base, 50 million lines of code or something, of C++ and Rust and Kotlin, and some stuff we are still trying to categorize, but there are teams working on that. Um, it has evolved over years, and we'll, we'll review that in a couple of slides time. Good, that's working. Um, inputs. There's a little boxy thing appeared over my inputs, but never mind. Can I get rid of that? Which are the shared notes? This thing here? Oh. Uh, Options. No. Oh. Uh, whatever, we'll, we'll live with it. That says inputs. Um, so what are the inputs to AOSP? So uh, there's a whole bunch of code written by the uh, Google Android developers, obviously, because that's kind of what it's there for. Um, and then there's a whole bunch of code um, in the uh, externals directory. So this is stuff not written by Google, but from various external projects. Um, and this is, this is kind of growing, which is kind of a good thing. There are some specific things you should be aware of here, though. First of all, that all of the stuff you see in the externals directory is actually a fork of the upstream. So essentially, the, uh, the Google developers, they fork uh, upstream projects, and they then put in a wrapper so it can build, be built with the Android build system, and then that's what you see. Um, this is problematic in a couple of ways. Uh, it, it, it basically makes a, a mismatch between the upstream version numbers and the version numbers within Android. It's not always obvious which version of lib, whatever it is that you're using. Um, and also, you'll find that in addition to it just being a fork, there's also sometimes some other random changes made by the Google developers to make it do specific things. So it's not, it's not identical to the upstream. Um, and so this kind of puts some kind of drag on the uh, merging of, of, of upstream code into, into AUSP. So we have stuff written by uh, the Googlers. We have the third-party stuff in the externals directory. Then there is a small amount of uh, board support stuff, the BSP layer, essentially, in uh, devices. Um, so far as I can work out, the only things really that not, are not written by uh, Google directly are some, uh, some board support from, uh, from Lenaro. So they support the, the Dragon board uh, targets. Uh, is anybody here from Lenaro? Ah, Emmett, of course, yes. He's the, go, go, go beat this guy up. Um, and also from Bay Libra, uh, who do the uh, AM logic targets. And yeah, that's basically it. And then finally, there is in the uh, device, uh, sorry, in the hardware directory, there is some uh, device support layer. Uh, sorry, there's some hardware abstraction layer stuff. So the, if you go look in there, there's code there from Qualcomm, from Samsung, and several other places. So those are the various inputs into AUSP. That's where the code is coming from. 
Uh, outputs, that says outputs. Um, so this is, when you run the build, it's going to basically generate a bunch of system images um, for whatever target you've selected. So the targets are going to be, first of all, the emulator targets, which I didn't, didn't mention on the previous slide, but we have emulator targets for uh, goldfish, which is based on QEMU, and there's also another fish called cuttlefish, which is based on CrossVM. In addition to that, we have um, the various uh, Pixel devices and also the other, other things in the device directory from uh, Bay Libra and, and Linaro, as I've just said. Uh, image formats, they're typically uh, EXT4, EROFS, or F2FS. Those are basically the file system formats supported directly by AOSP. And you can also get it to produce SDKs, and you can then export that SDK into Android Studio, and then you can write applications using these, these APIs. Okay, getting the code. So the fetching uh, f uh, uh, features of Android, first of all, everything is a Git repository. Android only really understands Git. Um, the other thing to note is that everything is downloaded at the beginning. So you have to uh, uh, use a, what's called a manifest. So the manifest is an XML file which has a list of Git repositories essentially. Um, and there are, the, the main manifest is at that link given there at uh, googlesource.com. So most people will start off with that, get the manifest using a repo init command. So we do repo init as shown here. Points. Um, give the URL of the manifest you want to use and optionally you can give a branch or a tag uh, for the particular thing you want. So repo init gets the manifest, downloads that, and then you do repo uh, sync. That is then going to iterate through the manifest and do a git clone or a, or a git update, depending what, what your stage you're at, on each one of those git repositories. And typically there is, well, I think currently in Android 14, I've not analyzed Android 15 very much, but in 14 there's about 1,200 uh, git repositories in the default manifest, which is quite a lot. Okay, so that's what you get from Google. Now, supposing that you want to add uh, code to your AOSP code you've just downloaded. So there is a way to do this. Uh, there's a thing called local manifests, which is a, just a subdirectory in the .repo directory, and you just drop into there some uh, manifest snippets in XML format uh, to add in whatever you want. So, for example, if I have a product called Marvin, then I can put in a, a little snippet like this, and this will download from my GitHub uh, the Marvin board support package. So this is kind of neat-ish. Um, the main snag is that a lot of the device manufacturers don't use it that much, as with other build systems, board support packages are always a bit of an issue. The SOC vendors tend to, instead of using this mechanism to actually give you a completely new manifest, so you point to their manifest, which in addition to the board support also has a whole bunch of other stuff which you don't necessarily want, but you're going to get anyhow. So, same old problem. So, notes and critique. Um, yeah. So essentially what we're hiding here then, or, it, or maybe not entirely obvious uh, until now, is that there is no uh, URL, there's no source URI equivalent if you're an a, 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 a open embedded person. There's no equivalent of source URI in the recipe files. So the only way that uh, Android knows which repositories you're going to have are the one is by putting them into the manifest file. So separating the manifest from the recipes is slightly problematic. Um, it means that Typically, you end up downloading way more stuff than you really need, because to be on the safe side, you just download pretty much everything. So you end up with a whole bunch of tool chains you're never going to use, you end up with a whole, point of, a whole bunch of board support packages you're never going to use, and whatever. Um, the size of the download, therefore, is much bigger. It's like 150 gigabytes, typically, um, possibly even, well, definitely even more now. 
and it, it's, um, it, it, it's not ideal in my opinion. Oh yeah, just to make things a little bit worse, um, one of the things they tend to do is uh, a lot of the, well, when, when you build AOSP, it doesn't do a complete bootstrap from, from nothing, from source code. You get a whole bunch of pre-compiled things in the uh, pre built directory. So pre built includes uh, all the tool chains, uh, most of the kernels are pre-built, well, in fact, all of the kernels are pre-built, uh, now I think about it, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So roughly, when you do the repo uh, sync, you get in about 60 gigabytes of, of binaries. And Git isn't that great at handling binaries. It doesn't, every time you, you check something, every time you check a binary into Git, you get a complete copy of the entire binary. It doesn't do um, any binary diffs or anything. So it tends to grow quite quickly over time. Okay, so that's getting the code. Next, I want to spend a couple of minutes looking at the, uh, the actual build system. And I'm gonna to have to accelerate a little bit, otherwise this is going, not gonna give time for discussion. Um, yeah, so initially the build system was based on just plain GNU make um, back in 2008. Um, but make doesn't really scale that well, um, and yeah. So 2016 with Android 7, they introduced uh, Kati and Ninja. So Kati is a tool which they wrote, which essentially parses all the make files, generates Ninja manifests, and then they just run Ninja to do the stuff. And actually that was a big improvement. The, the reliability, reliability of the build uh, was much better in Android 7, and also the reporting, because you get status information, that's all good. Um, Android uh, 8, 2017, they came up with a new idea called Soong. I'm um, not gonna go very much into Soong, but that's essentially their replacement for Make. Uh, or replacement, actually, for Kati. Um, unfortunately, the job uh, became more, um, uh, it took longer to implement than they realized. So the transition from Kati to Soong was never actually completed. So now we have a combination of Kati and Soong, which is problematic. Uh, Android 14, they thought they had the solution, which is to move everything to Bazel. So Bazel is another Google tool. Um, that project also was canceled because it turned out to be way too difficult. <laughs> So now we have Kati, Soong, and Bazel, all generating manifests for Ninja, and then Ninja does the actual work. Yeah. Chris, as, as this conference specifically encourages offensive questions, good, let, go on. Yep. Let, let me go ahead with one. Please do. So far, this sounds like, an, very much like, hey, we are, we are Google, and we define exactly what happy path to use AOSP, or we try to define it, but we never finish it until we, we define the next happy path. Exactly, yes. Oh, yes. so this is right. Yeah. Yep. Crazy, thank you. Yeah, so I mean, everybody knows, even people you speak to within Google, they say, hey, this is crazy, but it's just the way it works. And the fact is that if you want to build Android, and this is the only way to build Android, then you've got to suck it up. There's no alternative. Yeah, we could talk about this later on. Um, okay, I'm going to go through this quite quickly from now onwards. Um, one, blah, blah, blah. Next thing then, AOSP does not know anything about kernels or bootloaders or firmware. It purely builds uh, essentially the user space. There is a separate build environment for kernels now uh, based on the GKI, the generic kernel image, uh, and that does use Bazel, and that uses Bazel successfully, so that's a, that's a good thing. Um, but there is no integration between the GKI build and the uh, AOSP build. So you still have to build the kernel separately, then manually copy it into the AOSP tree because, because of hermetic build rules, uh, AOS, the AOSP build system can only see things in the AOSP directory. So it will not see your kernel build. So you have to physically copy it into the AOSP directory and then it will get picked up. Um, and same, it knows nothing about, build, uh, about bootloaders. It's up to you to build the bootloader and handle all that stuff. Um, 
This is quickly looking at, okay, so once you've downloaded the code and blah, 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 the next thing then is how do you actually uh, set about building things? And really I want to talk here a little bit about lunch. Um, lunch I quite like. So lunch tool, you say lunch and you give the, well nowadays you give the, uh, the product, uh, the release and the variant. So the product is something that's mentioned in one of the appropriate make files, such as AUSP underscore CF underscore x86 underscore 64 underscore phone. Okay, so CF stands for Cuttlefish, that's gonna build you a, a target for the Cuttlefish emulator. Um, the release, I'm not gonna talk about that, trunk stable, D yeah. Talk to me afterwards if you wanna go into that. Um, and then the variant, the variant is one of you, uh, sorry, uh, user, which is a production build, user debug, which is a debug build, or engineering, or eng, which is a engineering build with default root access. This I quite like because it's quite nice to be able to quickly switch between uh, uh, a user debug build and a user build with just one change to your lunch command. Um, and then to run the build, you type m or mm or mmm. So M will do a complete build from the top. It will build the entire product. MM will just build the recipe in the current directory, which is kind of handy if you just want to build that one thing. Uh, with three Ms, uh, you can give one or more directories, and it will then iterate through those directories and build just those recipes in those directories. Yeah, it's quite handy. Uh, if you want to dig down a little bit, uh, when you build a product, this is the way you specify the packages, or modules as they call them, that go into the product. Uh, so here we have product packages, plus equals, and then cuttlefish services, and vsock, something, something, something. Okay, so this is very similar to the way you do this in, in, uh, in Open Embedded. And you can dump out the uh, product packages variable using a nice little tool called get build var. Get build var product packages, that gives you the list of packages in your current product, which you have selected, of course, using lunch. Um, recipes, okay, so recipes are written either in the format, uh, either in a format called a blueprint, so we have something called android.bp. Blueprint is the uh, file format understood by Soong. Or there's also a legacy format called android.mk, which is a makefile fragment. That is the format required by Kati. And because we have the both uh, build systems, you have to both understand both um, the, 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 the blueprint format and the makefile format because you'll see them um, in any particular case. Okay, next. Developer workflow. This is something that uh, I think Android does quite well, um, especially if you are developing uh, a, a module within. Well, this is really aimed at the Android developers themselves, but you can you can make this work within a, within the company. So, with repo, you can use this to create essentially a new tag. So you do repo start and give it a name. That then defines a new thing. This is your own thing. Then you make a bunch of changes, you commit those changes by doing git add and git commit. And then you can do repo upload. So that will then upload it to whatever your upstream might be, which if you're in Google, that's gonna be the Google repositories. If this is in your own local repos, it will upload it to your own legal repos. And then there's a handy little tool called uh, Gerrit, which is then used for code review. So that keeps track of the things you, you've uploaded with repo upload and yeah, that, that then handles the, uh, um, the, 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 uh, the integration. Okay, so quick slide then. Um, I think uh, comparing uh, concepts between open embedded and AUSP. So very quickly then. So in, uh, in uh, open embedded, we have recipes, BB files. They are replicated pretty much with Android BP and Android MK files. Um, the configuration of the target you want to build, uh, that's uh, in, in open embedded, that's set with local.conf, you set the machine variable. Um, that information is kind of captured within the Android products.mk file. 
the machine.conf, the bit that actually says what architecture you're building for, what uh, compile flags to use, that is captured in the board config.mk file for your particular product. Um, Bitbake is replaced by Soong, essentially. Oh, yeah, BB class. Um, so the logic for uh, the build system, which in uh, Open Embedded will be in uh, BB class files, in uh, AUSP is in a combination of make files uh, and Soong modules. Soong modules are written in Golang. Um, again, talk to me later if you want to talk, if you want to know more about that. So finally then, things I think that AUSP does well. So I quite like the lunch command. It's nice and clean. It gives me, I can type lunch and it gives me a list of all the possible targets and then I can select one from that. Um, that's kind of quite nice. And also, like I say, by choosing uh, the variant, I can easily select whether I want a production build or a debug build. That's, that's very handy. Uh, the whole repo and Garrett thing, I don't use that myself very much, but that's nice as a workflow to be able to create a tag and then make some changes and upload those tags into Garrett. And we have some handy little um, uh, debug tools. We have ADB and Logcat and Fastboot which are convenient to use and they're kind of common across all Android targets. So you can, you can always assume you can ADB to something. You can always assume that Logcat to do something. I'd like to make a comment. Actually, I think that's one of the, at least I don't know about it. Those are tools like that is one of the significant things that I think Open Embedded and Yocto are missing, yep. which are some tools that have a predefined agent on the, on the device and that are just, uh, it kind of creates a scenario where uh, if you're writing a BSP, you want to make sure you support that agent because there's a known client tool to, to do some of these operations, like just move files in and out of the target and get the logs off the target and again, manipulate some of the firmware aspects, right? Yep. So a lot of the targets, I mean, there's a much more diverse set of targets that Yocto supports and Open Embedded supports. Uh, but it would still be nice to have, like, if you had, I think if you had the client agents and the tools already in Yocto and Open Embedded, I think the support for that would come along to make it more standardized. That, that would be cool, yeah. Yeah, I can make a comment. So we can add this to the Yocto project compatible list of requirements that if you want a comp like a BSP with that nice uh, certification, then uh, we, it needs to be able to support something like that. But uh, we need to discuss this, of course. Yeah. It'd be cool. I mean, it, it doesn't have to be ADB, but it could be something based on SSH or, or whatever. But like, it'd be nice uh, to have a simple little thing where you can say, add this to my, my local.conf, and it will then install the ADB client or equivalent and a logging client like Logcat. Yeah. And then they, I can assume from that point onwards, those tools will always be available on that platform. Yeah, but uh, yeah, so like a standardized way to interact with the device so that, yeah. because on, in Yocto you always need to read this huge readme that tells you how do you actually do something useful with your board, right? <laughs> the last project I worked on uh, was the Beagle Play and it took me, I swear, like four <laughs> hours to find out where the stupid WIC file was. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. Um, very last things then, so unfortunately I've spoken way too much, so we've got like two minutes left, sheesh. Um, you've got more time than that. Yeah, you've got a little bit more time. Have we got more time? Oh, Oof. okay. There's a ten minute gap. Is there? Yeah. Oh, I can talk much more slowly now then. I'll, I'll let you know. <laughs> cool. Okay, well that's good, because really I'm done. Uh, so now it's over to you guys for the discussion. So we're all here to discuss things. This is not about me, this is about you. Um, so here are some things that I think would be uh, interesting topics to talk about. So hey, let's talk. So um, yeah, could AOSP benefit from experiences of others, such as Open Embedded? Uh, I think the answer is definitely yes. Um, but how we would get that information through to Google, I'm not quite sure. I mean, I have this. Okay, I'm going to open this up. Would it be a good idea to uh, use Open Embedded to build Android? Does anybody think that's a good idea? Yeah, at least two people. Three people. Does anybody want to do it? <laughs> I mean, it, it would be good. What would, what would the value Tim, Tim, speak to the microphone. 
<laughs> is the possible value of that. You got complexity on top of complexity. I, I, I'm not getting it. If you use Yahoo, you can get S bombs automatically. Well, okay. Uh, okay, so Kate says S bombs. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, actually, Android does have support for S bombs as well, but it's not quite as good. I think that the reason I say this. Um, uh, is that when I'm writing this stuff, I'm thinking, is there anything that Android does better than uh, Open Embedded? And mostly not. The build system itself basically works better than uh, than the AOSP build system. And it would the, the idea is it would replace Kati and Soong and Bazel with Bitbake. Okay, so let me... <laughs> Over to Tim. So okay, so one thing uh, that. Google does better than, say, the Octo project is uh, make contracts with large suppliers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <yeah>. And <laughs> so, uh, so I mean, we Sony has products that are based on Android, and we're we're going to be using that build system. But if there was if there was some kind of uh, way to have Yocto project recognize the data and then extract some of the Yocto features out of it, like the S bombs or something. That I could see a value for that, but it's like it's mind bog, it's staggering in the complexity. I think <laughs> so. I'm not sure if that's if it's no, a practical I, problem. I, I, I didn't. That, that is not a serious thought, but it was. It would be nice. Okay. Um, so let's. Oh, sorry. Go on. Yeah. It was just a question uh, regarding, I don't know, uh, the Android build system. So how do you actually patch any of those 1,200 uh, Git repos if you have anything? In Yocto, you just uh, have your own uh, software layer with a BPA pen and a small patch. But how do you actually do it here if you want to patch any of those? Uh, yeah, I, you don't patch, you fork. That's you, what you're exactly, you fork, you fork. So, so the, the, you need to fork each of those uh, Git repos if AOSB you want to. AOSB does not have a concept of patches, so I can't just BB append something. Would be nice. Anybody from Google listening, hey, we, we want to BB append. You don't just fork the repositories, you also have to fork the manifest. Exactly. You also have to fork the manifest, yeah. yeah. Um, so this comes on to my uh, next point then. Well, actually the same thing, yeah. Uh, could AOSB benefit from uh, experiences? And uh, th there is a serious point of this as well, which is that it'd be really great if there was a forum such as this, but uh, but a little bit more ongoing, where all these various uh, developers and um, of, of these distant systems could actually get together and share stuff. So hey, if if Google, if you're listening, uh, or, or, and Android engineers, if you're listening at Google, uh, you know, share, help. We need, we need, we can help you. You can help us. That's that's the main main point here. And yeah, and the final thing, which, I, which is a bit of a joke, but uh, yeah, could we have a meta build system? Could we then have meta metadata? I really want meta metadata. Isn't that basil? Yeah, it's kind of basil, yeah. See. <laughs> Who's got the microphone? Ah. Hey, whoa. Good one. Is there something similar? Um, I think. It's been like 10 years since I built it, but uh, I think it used Ccache before. Um, how about Estate? Like, I think it's it would be something that it's helpful, right? It would be very helpful, yes. So, uh, so you can use Ccache uh, with AUSP, and I, I do that on a regular basis. That speeds things up when you're doing multi, when you're doing the repeated builds over and over. Yeah, so Ccache works. Um, there isn't an equivalent directly to uh, the shared state cache. Although there are some people over there somewhere who are working on something similar outside of Google. Um, source.dev, is that right? Yeah, source.dev. OK, cool. Yeah, um, also, I think it's undervalued how you can control your own toolchain versus downloading the binaries from Google. So you can create your AOSP device, and you have control over exactly what is building it, right? Yeah, um, yeah. The, the, the pre-built tool chains is a bit of a pain if you want to do anything slightly out of the ordinary. Right. Yeah, that that would be nice. Tim. So one thing I think AOSP could learn from from Yocto is the pre-built tool chains are also a little bit problematical from a compliance standpoint. 
<laughs> okay, yeah. Okay, anyone else? Come on, we have a few minutes. We've got three minutes. Three minutes. Seven. Um, I missed a lot of the talk, so I'm sorry for that. I might be repeating myself. Um, there's, um, maybe to what you, Chris, was, was saying, um, there's a talk part of the build track uh, where uh, David from Source of Dev is talking about using RBE for the kernel. Uh, Android has a mechanism to use RBE. RBE is a, a distributed build protocol for Bazel. Um, it doesn't work for the whole code base, but uh, it could improve your builds a little bit. Um, but that's something that you might so want to do. RBA is remote build environment or something? Uh, it's re remote build execution. Execution, uh, I right. think. Uh, it's a protocol that Bazel uses, but you could adopt it to Soon. Um, and yeah, it kind of works, uh, but not great. But come to that talk and you'll see more. Cool. Okay, over there. Yeah, I'm not an expert, but um, I tried to uh, update my Android system, and there, it seems like there is a hard dependency between AOSP and the firmware and everything, so you cannot use any versions with any kernel version, any firmware version. So how is that managed by? So because apparently you get binaries, but is there any way to get Linux kernel and the firmware integrated in the build system? like it's done via in build root or open embedded, basically you will start your build and it will build your kernel, build uh, everything um, you need. I mean, the integration is kind of informal in that you build the kernel separately and then you physically copy it into the AOSP tree. Um, and Serban has a, yeah, a comment on this? There's actually a better way to do that. Uh, there's, a thing called, uh, uh, there's a thing called a vendor interface. Uh, that basically means that uh, once your BSP uh, respects this sort of interface, then you can move the uh, operating system forward independent of the BSP. Uh, we're actually talking about that part of the Android uh, track. Come and take a look. There's a talk about longevity, and we're talking about how you could do that. Uh, I'm happy to chat to you afterwards about how you could do this. But yeah, that's what you should do if you want to update. Okay, cool. Last question. Going once, going twice. I think we're done. Yeah. Okay, thank you all very much.